Sometimes it's more fun to be the mouse instead of the cat. Am I right? Still, it'll be my blade that he discovers in the end. Pity, all good things must come to an end. Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take you to Bermuda, Bahamas. Judy Looney, aka Looney Tunes, taught forensic science at the university and was also a regular consultant on most of the big time murder cases in the area. She was, in fact, the guru of forensic science. Her classes weren't filled with freckle-faced undergrads. Her classes were filled with forensic scientists sent by cities from around the country and beyond to learn her approach to the craft, if you will. To say she was brilliant would be an understatement. Luckily for me, she was also still in the closet, and I'm not above using my inside information as leverage when I need a favor. Damn it, Whitey, breaking and entering again? Look, Whitey, I've got a class in 14 minutes. I will give you five minutes to speak your mind while I look for my lecture notes. Oh yeah, nice to see you again. Ditto, sweetheart, look, I'll make this quick. Promises, promises. Clock's ticking, gumshoe, let's go. Since you put it that way, look, I'm working on a murder case, okay, for mutual friends. You know them from poker night, that Mahu couple, Jay and Luke. Yeah? So what about him? Well, the stiffs lose niece. She's an FOB from Shanghai. She ran off with her tuition money. Started her own business. What kind of business? The kind that gets you dead. Tick-tock, Whitey. I haven't got time for 20 questions. All right. Listen, she wasn't a spy. She wasn't selling drugs, so... Ergo, she was in the flesh business. I get it. Let's see, was she a stripper, an escort, a hooker, what? <laughs> I suspect all of the above. So what do you want from me, Whitey? It shouldn't have taken an hour to hoof it back to Sally's neighborhood, but it did. The front door may have had yellow barrier tape blocking the entry, but that wasn't the case with the kitchen window, which conveniently overlooked the fire escape. If this were a Stephen King novel, a rotting hand would have burst through the glass and ripped open my throat. But it's not, so I tried the window and just like I planned when I exited earlier, the latch was disengaged. Once inside, I closed the latch window and, no use tempting fate, I pulled out my trusty pocket flashlight, the one I got from the Home Depot dollar bin, and swept the room. Not much to see in the kitchen. In fact, it didn't appear as though Sally spent much time in there at all. Even the fridge was empty except for an open box of Arm & Hammer baking soda. I walked slowly out of the kitchen toward the living room. I scanned the room with a small beam of light from my little flashlight, and it came to rest on the coffee table. The tabletop showed signs of being dusted for fingerprints. That's not what caught my eye.
I knelt beside the table and studied it closely. There was a navy blue thread. It was about two inches long. I debated sharing this evidence right away, but thought better of it. Instead, I whipped out one of the sandwich baggies that I keep handy and slipped the follicle inside. I continued on with my careful and professional sweep of the premises. The bathroom was even emptier than the refrigerator, not even a toothbrush. I studied every square inch of the small bathroom on the off chance that the crew before me had left behind something helpful. As luck would have it, it might have, as I pulled another blue thread from the drain. Snooping through people's private areas always makes me blush. I wandered down the short hall to her dark bedroom. I have to admit that I was surprised at the stark contrast between her bedroom and the rest of her apartment. It was like ground zero, clothes strewn everywhere. I backtracked toward the kitchen. I was about to exit through the window when the phone began to ring off the door. What the? I reached for the telephone. I knew instinctively who would be on the other line. Hello, Lieutenant Killjoy. Hi, you Ruth. Find you anything interesting? Nothing worth sharing, Oscar. I can always count on you to be you, Whitey. You make it too easy for me. What can I say? Like the song says, I gotta be me. Why don't you skip the fire escape and take the elevator down, like a real person? And while you're at it, bring down whatever you found up there. Uh, come on, Oscar. Can't we work together on this one? Come on down, Whitey. We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Judy punched off her laptop and watched as it powered down, then swiveled around 180 degrees to make her get away from home. Standing slowly, she yawned and did a big girl stretch, her arms reaching high for the ceiling as her lungs filled with air. Is he really attracted to that egghead? I think he is. Ah, oh, well. No counting for taste, I suppose. He has no idea. Someone is always watching. Always. <laughs> 